Hello, everyone. Today, I'm speaking with wildly popular and equally infamous writer, speaker, documentarian, and podcast host Matt Walsh. We discuss the early inception of Matt's hit documentary, What is a Woman? How dark parody can act as a means of social rebellion against tyranny. What is a woman? And so that's caused all sorts of misery and grief around the world and made people happy as well to have someone finally come out and make what was essentially a kind of black comedy about this preposterous state of affairs that we happen to find ourselves in. And so tell us about the genesis of the idea. And But the fact that my kids are inheriting this culture that has forgotten some of the most basic facts of reality um, is uh, really, really distresses me and troubles me. And I, and I hear stories all the time, and I'm sure you hear these stories too, constantly from, from parents. You know, there's, there's what this does to kids. There's the fact that opportunities are being taken away from women and women are being, um, you know, they're being degraded by this and dehumanized by it and, and all of that appropriated, their identity appropriated. All that is true. But what is underneath it, the underlying issue under all of that is, is that this is just an attack on truth itself. It's a, so the reason why I really care about it, first and foremost, is that it's not true. Like we're being, we are being told that we must accept something that is not true, that we must go along with something that is not true. True, and uh, and I care about the truth because if you don't care about the truth, then what's the point of anything? Like, what's the point of anything that we're doing or saying or any of that if if we're willing to discard the truth? Um, and when I and I also remember being distressed by the fact that so many people who I thought were on my side um, thought that this was kind of a sideshow distraction. They didn't think it would go anywhere. They thought it was a fad. It wasn't important. Uh, there were a lot of conservatives who just went along with it because they were trying to be polite. And um, yeah, well, conservatives do that a lot. They do, they do, and, and, and it's it's unfortunate because it's like it's a in some ways it's a good impulse that you want to be polite, you have good intentions, you you know you don't want to be mean to somebody, you want you want you don't want to make them feel bad. Um, and those good intentions are exploited uh, to a great extent by the left. When when did you actually start working on the film proper? It would have been about a about a year and a half before it came out, so it would have been in like mid twenty twenty one. The groundwork for the film, though, was just this question, which obviously I didn't invent the question, "What is a woman?" But it occurred to me. Um, well, it's such a stupid question. I mean, the fact that we have to ask that question. You know, I was looking at this on the biological front. So, sex is older than nervous systems by almost a billion years. That's how fundamental it is. It's probably more fundamental as a biological reality than up or down in terms of the, the, the stable phenomena that our nervous systems have actually adapted to. I think you could make a very strong case that there is no bit of reality that's more bedrock than sexual differentiation, not least because any organism that propagates itself sexually, and that's pretty much any complex organism for all sorts of complicated reasons, if an organism can't tell the difference between its sex and the opposite sex, then it doesn't propagate. And so uh, failure to propagate might constitute the most fundamental of category errors, right? In terms of the, the film, I, I think we wanted, to, we wanted to structure it all around this really basic question of what is a woman? Because it, 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 occurred, it occurred to me a couple of years before we started making the film that this is, yeah, it's a very basic question. It's a very simple question. It's the kind of question we shouldn't have to ask. Um, it's the sort of question that the answer is so obvious that some people struggle with it just because of that, because it's so innate that you don't, you don't stop to think about it. Um, but it is, uh, the simplicity is, the, the, that's where you find the beauty and the power in the question. Um, rather than making arguments at the other side, it's like you're giving the floor to them and you're saying, okay, here's you're claiming this and this. Well, tell me more about that. So when a man says, I identify as a woman, I, I, can, I can respond and say, well, you're not a woman and here are my reasons. A more powerful response is to say, oh, you're a woman. What do you mean by that? What do you mean you identify as a woman? What, what are you trying to say exactly? So that's all, all that question is really accomplishing is, is just, it's really giving the floor back to the other side and saying, Expl explain to us what you mean by that. Um, and they're not able to do it. And if you can demonstrate that they themselves can't explain their own ideas and their own claims, 
then then it's it's pretty much over. There's nothing else to say. They've they've exposed their own ideas as as a there, privilege. There's, but I've come to realize more recently that almost everything that's happening in our culture has a satirical edge, and that's probably too true of authoritarian totalitarianism in general. You know, and I started to understand that that's why the figure of the evil clown is such a common trope in fiction, is that when you get a totalitarian when you get a rise in totalitarian ideology, you get a concomitant rise in, what would you say, the dominion of the evil clown, and everything turns into a parody. And there was certainly an element of that in your film. You know, I mean, I was watching you interview professors and so forth, and it's so preposterous that, well, it looked at times that you were having a difficult time believing that you were doing this, or even sometimes keeping a straight face. And so what was that experience like? Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting too because our the original movie, the way that I conceived it, would have been even more satirical. I think I originally thought of this as a as a fully satirical, um, almost in a certain way, playing a, a character, almost as someone who's bought into this stuff, and I'm I'm getting these people to keep talking, um, and we kind of as we as we began to film it, we we started to see it differently. Uh, where we needed, and so if you watch the movie, you can tell it's like almost exactly halfway through. There's this kind of tonal shift as we get into the more to the more serious conversations, um, and we had to have that there because some of this stuff that's happening is so horrifically evil that there's no way that I can see to to make it funny or anything. And we, we have to we have to be willing to, to to stare right into that darkness. But then I didn't want to lose the satirical part of it either because it's it is also true. Although this stuff is is horrifically evil, it's also absurd. It is completely absurd. And we have to point that out. And I think that um, one of the first mistakes that we made, when I say we, I mean, you know, the people that, the, the team sanity, the people who know better, one of the first mistakes we made was um, by in thinking that, well, we the last thing we can do is ridicule any of this because that's too mean. Um, I know we, we need to, we need to ridicule it. It's, and it's not about ridiculing individual people who are confused or mentally ill or struggling. It, it, ridiculing the idea, the notion, the claims that are being made, um, and if any individuals are being ridiculed, it's it's the people who know better and are out there propagating this stuff. Like you know, we had we talked to a doctor in the film, and who's a proponent of this stuff and transing the kids, and she's involved in that. And it, the conversation devolves into this stuff about uh, get, do do chicken does a chicken have a gender and uh, can a male chicken lay eggs it gets really really absurd um, and she becomes kind of the butt of the joke but but it it's that's her fault it's because her own position is so ridiculous that um, that it's it gets exposed that way you probably you probably made a postmodern mistake in your assumptions your mistake I would say in that initial assumption, was that common sense was semantic, that it was coded in explanation, that people know what a woman is because they can say what a woman is and they can define it, and that's how they derive their knowledge. And I don't think that's the case at all, and I actually think you know it isn't the case because you said that you know knowing what a woman is is so obvious that you don't need to be able to articulate it. And most of the fundamental bedrock assumptions of our culture are actually beyond verbalization. Yeah, I think I think there was, there was certainly an element of that. Um, although it was interesting when we, when we went over to Kenya and talked to uh, you know tradi- traditional tribes there, it, it, there was not that same. Conv- it took them a minute to understand what we were ash- actually asking, because it is so obvious that when we first asked the question, they thought we, they thought I must be asking something else because I couldn't possibly be asking that. Once, once they understood what the question was, they had no trouble talking about it, you know, in, in, in detail and being very clear about it. I think that back in the United States, yeah, there was there was some 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 confusion about being put on the spot to explain something that's so innately understood. But then there was also what seemed to me to be a, an awareness among many of these people that this is a loaded question now, and they can't really talk about it and be honest. In fact, we, we heard about that. There are many people we talked that we, we talked to who aren't in the film because they didn't want to be on camera. They refused to be on camera and they would tell us like, I can't, I, you know, I can't talk about this with a camera rolling because, because of my job, because I'm going to school, because of this and that. Uh, so there's a real, there's a real fear that people have that pervades through this whole conversation. 